Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience, from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you lead a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now, and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey, 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 I am so excited to be here with you right now, again, bringing you amazing information so that you can live this full, fabulous, deserving, abundant life that is for you. It's meant for you. You're wired for it. We just get the messages that it's not, right? And today, oh my goodness, I am so excited to bring to you Emily Avagliano. She is a relationship coach and she's going to go deep on how we can have wonderful, amazing relationships in our lives. And she's the expert. So Emily, welcome. I'd love for you to share about yourself. Sure. No problem. Hi, I'm Emily Abagliano, and I have been a dating coach for over eight years. I am an author. I wrote a book called um, Dating After Trauma. I, I've also created an online dating app that combines online dating with dating coaching. So you get both in one place. Um, it's a community of people that are interested in long lasting, loving relationships. It's called dating to get married app.com. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys check it out. And I can't wait to share some golden nuggets with you about how to find a healthy partner and create a loving relationship that lasts. Wow. 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 Okay. A dating app. This is so interesting. There are you know, immediately certain names come to mind for dating apps that are out there. What is different about yours? Why are you doing a, a one in addition to all the ones that are out there? Sure. Most dating apps are transactional, which means mm. it's all about getting on the app and just getting a coffee date or meeting someone. They don't really do anything to help support you in how to have that great first date or, or how to connect a community of like-minded people. So yeah. the coaching aspect, well, we have live dating classes where, wow. where many people come on, 50, 100 people, and we're talking about how to have a great conversation on a first date, mm -hmm. how to handle rejection, how to know you're dating someone that has the potential of being in a loving relationship that lasts. And so wow. this, this community of like-minded people, it's not just that they want a relationship and they want to get married. It's that they want to have an amazing relationship. They want yeah. to be great at love. And so by meeting people, not just from a search, but yeah. from seeing them talk and interact in a dating class and understanding people on a different level, and then taking that vocabulary, those common rules into that date. So each mm. person knows how to behave and knows how to talk about conflict, misunderstandings, missed expectations in a healthy, loving way. So it's just uh -huh. really, I, I, I sum it up as dating with kindness, dating, a dating approach where everyone is bought in to a community that supports each other in finding love. That is so powerful, right? And, you know, having those guidelines that can help people to know how do I have a healthy relationship? What do I do when conflict comes up? How do I deal with rejection? This sounds amazing. And you mentioned community. So how, how do you build a community like this where like getting online and being able to talk about these things seems, uh, you know, a little bit intimidating? How are you doing this? 
Well, I started about eight years ago as just a dating coach, right? So I had mm-hmm. written a book and then I started coaching people as individuals. And I learned a lot from that experience. At first, I had just an online course, but yeah. I realized that lo- that single people are lonely. Yeah. They want to connect with others. They want to hear other people talk about the problems and situations that they face on a date. And yeah. really, that's your first version of practicing empathy for others. I have a live Q and A, um, and you know, you know what's ironic, Carol? What? <laughs> I started my whole program for women. I was like, it's called wow. dating to get married. Women are going to love this. Guess who's the first person that showed up? A, a man. man. <laughs> This is the first person that buys every product that I ever sell first. A man. And That's amazing. I know. So we come into this thought process. Oh, I want to get married, but men don't. Or yeah. you know, I'm going to get rejected. And we, yeah. we, we, and this is where the, the, the neural pathways and this, this deeper concept of, you know, you keep or you keep are attracted that you're attracted to the same type of person. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, you're drawing you, things to you. Yes. Yeah. And that is because your neural pathways have stored an experience under the word dating and relationships. And mm-hmm. unless people start triggering those keywords or experiences, yeah. you don't associate that with passion or love. And of course, as you know, everything comes from childhood or when your brain yes. was and growing, but right. being able to decode why am I attracted to this person and how can I change my brain to be yeah. more open and receptive to something healthy? And it all starts again with that sense of community and seeing for the first time for some people, a, a guy say, I really want to be in a loving relationship and I want to be good at being in a loving relationship. I don't yeah. want to stop. <laughs> yeah. How do I do that? Or and, settle, right? Or settle. Yeah. And, and women just their eyes pop out of their head. And they're like, I never knew this guy existed. And yeah. maybe it's just that one. And then they see five, then they see 10. And they're like, yeah. wow, this is really breaking down those neural pathways. It's that sure store is. these bad experiences under men, under dating, under relationship, yeah. and opening yeah. me up to another possibility of a type of guy I could date. And I would say the I same thing is true for men hearing women speak in this community. And we do have LBGTQ. Everyone's welcome. So don't worry about that. Um, I teach from a perspective of honoring your partner's uniqueness and not necessarily gender roles. So you're not going to hear me say men do this and women do that. It's all about uh, the uniqueness of your partner and understanding your specific partner's wants and needs in a relationship. Oh, what a what a powerful thing. Are you hearing, are you hearing this that, you know, it is about the neural pathways and it's so interesting too, Emily, because I've been really looking at the quantum physics, the quantum mechanics of how we are vibrationally attracting things as well. And literally one of the things we talk about a lot in this community is releasing judgment, getting curious. And when you're in judgment, you're attracting that a judgment right back to you when you're in, you know, um, the limiting beliefs that we inherit in our childhoods, then that's what you're going to be bringing to you and experiencing. So uh, the fact that you're using this in the work you do with relationships, Ships is just lights my fire. And I know it lights your fire too, listener. And so it's exciting, right? Because we have tools available to us to create the reality that we want to create and where we've been having the experiences of not the right partner, not the right guy, somebody who rejects us or abandons us or whatever it may be, doesn't treat us with respect or kindness then it's super empowering to be reminded that we can actually change that and um, that you have a whole community that does that. So, yeah. And is aware of this concept. So I like to think that your limiting beliefs are the background music playing during the date, right? Yes. They're influencing your tone of voice, your word choice, how you hold your body. That yeah. that music, oh, no one good out there is left yeah. 
I'm yeah. not going to be able to impress like this. this person. I have to earn their attention or get yeah. them to like me. If you yeah. those limiting beliefs, that's the music playing that's dictating your mm. ability to have intimacy with this other person. It literally affects your brain chemistry to be yeah. able to recognize, is this a potential healthy partner for me or not? Mm. And the other person to be able to see you as a, a as a loving, interesting person, right? Yeah. So if we have all these negative thoughts, we're going to say negative words. We're going to hunch our shoulders. Yeah. We're not going to, we're going to be judgmental. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be in a fierce state on that date. And yeah. our partner is going to look at us and say, something's wrong. I don't know why, but I get this sense that this person's untrustworthy. Why? Because you're in a fear state. And they're think not about attracted. Walking, yeah. yeah, you're not attracted. You're walking down. Think about this. It's like walking down in a neighborhood and a barking dog is yelling at you. You look at that barking dog and you yeah. know that dog's in fear. You know you're in danger right? Yeah. You want to get away from the dog. Yeah. If you're on a date and you're in cop mode, this is what I call it. You're I asking it. question after question. How are you going to hurt me? Are you really mm. into a relationship? Do you, are you serious about love? Mm. And it's, it's cop mode because it's like, where were you the night of the 24th? And yeah. you have to prove yourself innocent before you can date me. Would you have rescued me? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the other person's going to pull away from that. And if they're not pulling away from that, they're not healthy enough to be in a relationship. So not yeah. only are you pushing away potential partners that could love you, you're yeah. attracting in partners that are in that toxic cycle with you. And yeah. then reinforcing the core belief because they're unable to be in a loving relationship. They haven't healed themselves from the trauma that yeah. they've experienced that makes them attracted to you. And that's, and that's exactly what our brains science. want. They want, the brains want us to continue in the place that we are, not in the new relationship, not in the healthy place that we absolutely deserve. And so, yeah, you know, this lights my fire, right? <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned too, too um, in your work that there are certain characteristics of a healthy relationship. What are those? Absolutely. So when my clients go on dates, I always tell them to ask two questions. Number one, is this person capable of being in a loving relationship with me? Mm -hmm. Two, does this person share my values? You need yeses on yeah. both in order for it to be a potential match, okay? Because someone could be in a loving relationship with you, but their idea of their best life is too different that it doesn't make sense to merge your lives together. So I give my clients two templates, two easy to understand ways of how to answer these questions. So let's take the first question. Is this person capable of a loving relationship? I have an acronym EMAR, which stands mm -hmm. for empathy, maturity, appropriateness, and reciprocity. Okay. Empathy. Okay. Empathy is, is this person actively trying to get to know you? Are they trying to understand your likes, your dislikes, your preferences, the details of your life? When they ask you a question, how was your day at work? And you said, oh, I have a big presentation tomorrow. The next time they see you, did they ask how it went? Yeah. Right? Um, so they're keeping up. They're keeping track. They literally want to view life through your eyes. That's what empathy is. Okay. And empathy is directly related to the quality of relationship you're going to have with this person. So 10 years, fast forward 10 years, if they're strong on empathy, you're going to be telling yourself, I'm with my best friend who really gets me. They understand me on such a deep level. Why? Because they're great at empathy. Guess wow. what empathy also does? Prevents you from dating a psychopath or a narcissist. Mm -hmm. This is the coolest thing about science. Okay? That is, yeah, so powerful because I work with some women who are in that situation, and that is my um, background. You know, it it's uh, not an easy journey to come out of and heal from, and then enter into a healthy relationship. So, wow, 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 right? And the easiest way to test for empathy. Did they ask me a question on the date? Did they ask me questions? Really good questions. Were they trying to understand? Or was it a date where I asked them a question, they answered, then there was a pause, 
So you jumped in and answered, right? Because you right. wanted to keep the flow going. But if there's no good questions, if they're not asking you detailed questions, if they're not trying to understand your preferences or your likes, or they treat your preferences and likes as an ego hit, yeah. right? If you upset them or insulted them, then yeah. they're not ready for a relationship. Mm. Wow. 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 That's this so such good, uh, good markers. So EMAR. So first one is empathy. Second one is maturity. You said. Correct. Now, okay. now empathy is the quality, like how close or connected you feel. Maturity yeah. is how long the relationship will last. Uh -huh. So when I say maturity, I'm not talking about their age. I'm talking about their problem solving capabilities. When okay. they're in a fight, what happens? Do they act like a toddler and screaming? <laughs> well, do they blame and shame you and to try to control your actions? Do they sh just be quiet and, and pull back and ghost you? Yeah. None of those are things you want in a long-term loving relationship. What yeah. you want is someone that can express their needs and wants, see you as a unique individual with your own needs and wants. We don't have to be the same, but yeah. we have to be curious about each other. And then put both on the table and start brainstorming and problem solving. I always tell my clients, if you're insulted by your partner and what they said, be curious first before shaming or blaming. So go ask them, wow. hey, when you said this, what was your intention? Right? That is a version. That's the a baby skill and learning how to be better at maturity. But I go ahead and teach a whole process of how to problem solve with your partner in a way that actually creates intimacy and connection. So wow. maturity is a skill that can be learned. The second skill or third skill, sorry, empathy, maturity is the third one is appropriateness. Okay. Yeah. And it's literally just being appropriate for how long you've known the person, right? What does so, appropriate look like? What does that mean? Oh, okay. Sure. Um, you don't want someone that jumps into a relationship with you instantly, right? So some people have experienced this. You go online, you meet someone, they're starting to message you 10, 15 times a day. Maybe they <laughs> go on your first date. Then you're dating like three, four times in the first two weeks. Yeah. Maybe you're even starting to talk about, do you want kids? Or is this going to work out? Like you go way too far in talking about either emotional content or pretending you're already in a relationship mm. when it hasn't been earned. Too right? far, too fast. Wow. Right. My, okay. my, my best example of this is I was at a conference speaking and this woman came up to me afterwards and she said, I want to know if this person is appropriate. And I said, okay, well, tell me. And she said, well, you know, um, he wants me to meet his mom and he says I'm the one and that we're perfect for each other. But here's the thing. We have not gone on a date yet. We've just been messaging in the app. And I'm like, dump immediately. Yeah. I go yeah. on the date. Yeah. Because it, if it's just the words, it's a fake romantic story. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's the buttons you pushed in the brain for that other person. And they have created this fantasy and projected it on you. Yes. And you're not going to yeah. live up to that fantasy. They're, and the gap is what causes the pain. Causes the pain. You know, I've experienced that. I experienced dating someone after I was widowed and I was on such a high pedestal. There was no possible way I could live up to it. And I kept saying, you know, I'm a real person. I'm not perfect. I have faults. You know, I have fire in my belly. <laughs> um, and it wasn't being heard. It was like it was being the, and it was, yeah. it was that brain, you know, that this is who she is. And yes, that perfect individual does exist. Absolutely. And, you know, there was a lot of alignment, but that, that pedestal piece was very much tied with what you're saying. It was like, it was, it was false and it wasn't, it wasn't a real intimate connection in that way. And I didn't realize that until later, but it was a powerful lesson. So yeah, I can relate. Right. And, and when you're in relationships like this, that basically push fast forward on the relationship and you're, you're, you know, you're in one of these when in two weeks, it feels like six months, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not appropriate. It's not real. They haven't taken the time to understand the details of who you are. You mm -hmm. have your brain hasn't caught not caught up to all the experiences you've had yeah. to know whether 
you're you're flooded by words of like dating, love, you know, the these yeah. over the top grand gestures that aren't earned. They're not instead of alignment. Yeah. 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 Or congruent. Yeah. Yeah. The other version of being inappropriate, okay, is when they send mixed messages. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're just such an amazing woman, Carol. I can't wait to meet the person you end <laughs> up with. And you're like, what does that mean? Wait, I thought we were yeah. dating. <laughs> right. So, or um, they're like, oh, Carol, I'd really love to go out with you next week. And then they mm-hmm. never follow through. Right. Right. Wow. So powerful. So, and, so powerful. And, and I like to call those the wounded bird because mm. it's usually they try to make you feel sorry for them. Like, oh, I just wish I could be the person you deserve. Wow. But this is all I can give you is really what they're saying. This is it. This wow. little tiny snippet. And so I'm not going to let you get closer to me. Um, so both of those versions are based on attachment style. The mm-hmm. first one is the anxious attachment style that wants to um, deal with the stress and anxiety and uncertainty by jumping into a relationship too fast. The second one is the avoidant that wants to experience intimacy, but gets scared of it and then puts up roadblocks to prevent the relationship from moving forward. Wow. So this is amazing what we're talking about, just having this acronym to guide us, right? And so relatable and amazing. So what's the last part of the acronym? Sure. The last one is called reciprocity. And this is where you want to make sure your partner is equally investing in the relationship. So um, I'm doing little hand puppets, but if you're listening to this, think of a tennis match, okay? You put energy and effort into the relationship, your partner matches you. Then you put more energy, then they put more energy. And it can be um, emotion, it can be finances, it can be um, validation, it can be just showing up 100%, but you're equally growing the relationship together. And it's like a tennis match. The ball goes over the court and they return it. A you partnership, go, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. most people think they just show up and they feel something. I tell my clients, you are creating a relationship together. You're both putting inputs in and it's, you're creating and growing this relationship. It gives you power. It helps you understand that it's not just something you're receiving or happening to you. You're putting energy and effort in as well. And this is called reciprocity. This, Mm -hmm. I give something, you give something. I give something, you give something. And when you've got that great flow and it feels like the most amazing tennis match, you're off to the races in in checking this box. And this partner is very good. Um, You know, it's interesting too, because what you're saying, if I think back about, you know, what's entered into our childhood and our earlier experiences, we may have had a family history with not a great role model of relationships or, you know, general generational breakdowns over time. And so we don't have a picture of what a healthy, amazing relationship looks like. Now, one set of my grandparents, they were married for 70 years, Emily, and they told each other every single day, I love you. And Aww. they kissed one another and they would say, how are you doing today? And they had little cute sayings that they would say to each other. And seven, it was 71 years, I believe, um, before they passed away. That's rare. You don't have that role model or that mentorship very often in life. And then these things are wired in, like you were saying. And so we're trying to enter into a new relationship in a healthy way and have a great life and happiness and a wonderful relationship. But we've got all of this in here. And then you come along with uh, being a fabulous mentor and guide to walk people through this process and say, hey, here's what's possible. Here are the four characteristics of a healthy relationship. This is what this looks like with all the support that goes around that. And so this is powerful. And And you mentioned two questions. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. The first question is, is this person capable of love? Right. And so that's the EMAR empathy, maturity, appropriateness, and reciprocity. Okay. Okay. That's what I want you to look for. Uh, The second one is um, do we, do we have shared values? Right. Mm -hmm. 
at the end of the day, how yeah. hard is it to blend our two lives together? I mean, does one person want to live in the city, the other in the country? Is one person a touchy-feely person and the other person's not? You have to have similar stylistic ways mm-hmm. of expressing love and a vision for your best life that's yeah. supportive of each partner. Now, you're never going to get 100% because you wouldn't want to date yourself. No. I always say go for an 80% match and allow 20% to be different, okay? okay. Um, another thing I also say is how you can tell someone shares your values fairly easily is what do they like to talk about for hours? What do they spend their money on? And what experiences are important to them in their life? And so that's when a question as simple as, what do you like to do for fun on the weekends? Suddenly becomes an intense gathering of data to understand this person's value system Mm -hmm. and see if it's a match, right? Wow. Yeah, this is so powerful. You know, just... Just again, having the process, and this is one of the things that I talk about with my clients. If, you know, we can go out there and we can be bouncing off the walls with trying to change our lives and do things and hear what our best friend did and, hey, that's working for a while. Hear the Instagram reel. Hey, that's working for a while, but really spend an inordinate amount of times without a complete clear process. And that clear process is what gives us the tangible, measurable results that we need. And this is the beauty of the work that you do, because you can go right now and work with Emily and you're going to have this clear process of how to have that amazing relationship that you deserve. You absolutely deserve this. And a part of our beliefs are that we don't, that we don't deserve this and that it's not possible. And I even had somebody say to me just recently, life is not a fairy tale. And I went, (laughs) oh, yes, it is. It certainly is. It depends on the life you want to create, right? Well, and that's what's even more powerful about the online dating is that it's not just me telling you, it's hundreds of people signing Mm -hmm. up to this community that believes this type of love is possible and that they're actively taking steps to better themselves to create this type of love. Willing to learn, right? Yes. Men and women, not just women. (laughs) That's so cool. Yeah, And and men, you know why men like it? I finally went ahead and asked a bunch of them. They're like, because it's so clear. You show me how to win in a relationship. Yeah. And when I know how to win, I'm going to put energy in. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. I think that's important. It's so important. And it, it's important to you to know that whatever those limiting beliefs are that are driving where we've had unhealthy relationships, it's thought plus emotion that forms belief. It's heart and soul and mind all together that propel us to uncover these lies that are operating in our system and move towards the success beliefs and the truth and wire those in in such a way that that's our new operating system. That's where the fairy tale comes in. Like I, I'm teasing because no, because you go in and do this work, it isn't all of a sudden Shangri-La or everybody on the planet would be knocking down our doors, right? You've got Shangri-La, I'm in, right? But in many ways, it is Shangri-La in that you have more power than you think you do. It's about unlocking and unleashing that power to, again, create the life that you want to live, including positive, healthy relationships that you're willing to go on that journey and to continue to work together and learn in this community where you up level, right? Where you're doing it together. That's really powerful. So I love this. I think one of the best things you can do in your life is to realize it's not always about you. And sometimes yeah. it's just a skill you're missing and yeah. not your self-worth that is mm. in play. Okay. Yeah. So for example, when people are fighting or approaching fighting in a relationship, I always tell them, you know, there's ways to explain to your partner what the problem is that doesn't hurt or injure your partner. Yeah. And when you do that, your partner behaves differently to you. Wow. So the one that said life isn't a fairy tale, 
she probably is saying word choices that are negative. Yeah. And the person across the 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 table from them is going to mirror back that negativity yes. because they're on the defensive. Right. But so when I always say if you want to set a boundary with someone, make it a positive boundary. Mm-hmm. You can say the exact same thing as a way of encouragement of the behavior you're seeking mm-hmm. versus in a way that shames that partner. I so, love that. If you Speaking want the person, life into our partners, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you want your partner to open the door, instead of saying, you should have opened the door, I felt really bad, you know, like you don't really care about me and that you should open the door. That's shame and blame versus, you know, what would be cool is if you open the door, that just makes me feel so good inside. I really feel like you're taking care of me, right? Yeah. I told my husband this, he opened the door and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just explaining. He's like, no, I'm going to open the door. Do I get my treatment? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's so it funny. really does work. People get excited yeah. when they know how to win with you. And you can always say it in a positive, flirty, or upbeat way that doesn't shame, injure, or harm your partner. Such a great example. And you know, Emily, one of the things that you mentioned to me before we got on that um was very powerful, like um whether you're currently in a relationship or you're looking, you mentioned that these things that you teach also apply to business partnerships and collaborations and business partnerships are really where the top uh, people that are successful exist, where they're operating from, because that's what works, right? And so I'd love for you to speak into that. Sure. Um, when I first started coaching with EMAR, people would come back to me and said, Emily, every relationship has improved, not just my romantic relationships. Wow. I've noticed my friends and like who's missing an aspect of EMAR. And like, that's why I'm mad at them. Right. Yeah. But most importantly, you can be EMAR. When you bring EMAR, your behaviors, when uh, when you're first meeting a business partner and you're empathetic toward them, you're curious about their needs, wants, mm-hmm. and, and what's important, their preferences to them. You are a problem solver with them. You are not going too fast in the relationship, right? You're not asking yeah. them to do things that hasn't been earned or you haven't developed that point in the relationship just yet, yeah. or you're messing up on reciprocity. They at you, you ended a business meeting. They asked you to send an email and you forgot, right? Yeah. You can use the same characteristics to judge whether that person is going to be a healthy business partner for you and also how for you to be a healthy business partner for them and increase the likelihood of intimacy and connection and doing more business with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wow. 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 I mean, how powerful and cool is that? And thank you, Alex Leanne. You're amazing. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting too. And then even bringing in that second question of alignment and values. This is one of the things we do in business as we divine our mission, vision, and values. And for that purpose of when you have a team and partnerships, you want to enroll people in your vision. And so that you're working as a cohesive unit. Well, it's the same thing in relationships, right, Emily? I mean, to to be able to live that life that brings us joy and that is continuing to expand, right? So absolutely. You want so the person doesn't have to be you exactly. In fact, it's better when you have some shared values and some uniqueness because the uniqueness actually is a strength in problem solving. The other person seeing it from a different point of view that can actually benefit to your own problem solving. I often just say to myself, how would my husband handle this situation? Some people say, what would Jesus do? Right. I mean, you're using another point of view to solve or look or dissect a problem. Through a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And so you can definitely do that um, values match. You want enough to be in common that it makes sense for you Mm. to do a business deal together. But you also can manage 20% difference as a a, a unique way of expanding your your way of doing business. What can I learn from this partner? How they're working and solving problems that I could incorporate in my own 
uh, maturity, my own problem solving. Problem. Well, one of the principles I of wealth I teach is the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. And that's exactly what you're talking about here, that 80-20 principle and how can we take our 20% or less and make it produce even our 80% or more, we can use this in relationships. And you've mentioned this a couple of times. So, you know, that rings my bell. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting. And in regard to the app, oh man. So uh, is it is it going to be a mobile app? Is it going to, how do we jump into this? and get involved in what you're doing right now. So absolutely. By the time this airs, the mobile app will be available, but you can always go to www.datingtogetmarriedapp.com, datingtogetmarriedapp.com and um, from a computer or browser or even your phone. And it will, you can immediately register for free. I don't take your credit card. You can look around, you can learn about dating. When you want to message someone, I'll take your credit card. <laughs> but, but in the meantime, you can search the database. You can learn about love, get more, more out of what you want in early dating or yeah. in relationships so that you're so much more successful. I will tell you, you're going to have to change. <laughs> it's not just about getting on the app and searching for a person. And then that wonderful Prince Charming or, or yeah. princess comes into your life. There's adjustments and change and ways to talk that create intimacy and connection. I've, I've talked about EMAR tonight. I talked about asking a curious question when you're offended. Yeah. I talked about not shaming and blaming your partner and instead saying a positive way of encouragement to get them to change instead of a negative boundary. So you'll what, learn about what all to open the door skills. for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And I, I do want to share, we will have her information in the show notes. It will be very easy for you to find and get in touch with her and the work you're doing, the difference that it makes Instead of being transactional, yes. being, you know, about healthy, positive, flourishing relationships is, uh, this has just been so amazing to have you on. I appreciate you being here and thank you so, so much. Oh, Carol, it has been a blessing. I, by the way, Carol is 100% Emar. I love her so much. <laughs> she is such a doll. And um, it's just such an honor to be on this show with you. And, and I you. think so highly of you. And I think so highly of what the work you're doing to help people. Um, I would say there's probably a 90% overlap between Carol's thought processes and mine in terms of using science to yeah. help people experience a better life. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, we will see you next week. Thank you for being here. Definitely listen, download, subscribe. We are so happy to support you and bring you the powerful information so that you can live your dreams. See you next week. Ciao. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.